morning. Good morning. And welcome to First Reformed Church. If you want to become a member of uh, the First Reformed Church, we will have they will have classes, um, the new member classes in October and November. Please see Pastor if you're interested in joining or have any questions about them. Tonight there will be a new, there's a new young adult Bible study, and for people who are high school graduates, college grads, college students or graduates, and those in their 20s who want to uh, study more about the Bible during, uh, study more about the Bible. And there'll be a meeting tonight at 6.30, either in the Clements Room or in the Van White Hall. And also, the, the clothing drive is still ongoing. With uh, the will accept bag or box donations of clothing, shoes, accessories, or anything clothing-wise. And you can leave it outside toward in, in, in the garage by Pastor's house. And please, uh, Give your attention to uh, Susan Red Manley playing lovely creative. <laughs> Please join me in our call to worship, taken from the books of the Bible of Isaiah, Psalms, and Proverbs. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. In God, we have put our trust. We will. 
will not fear. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. In God, we have put our trust. We will not fear. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. We have put our trust in you. We will not fear. Amen. Please open your hymn books, and together let's sing our hymn of praise number 128. I sing the mighty power of God. Psalm 32 tells us that when we confess our sins, when we, when we let go of those sins and throw them at the foot of the cross, then we're freed, our, our health, our minds will restore, our hearts are restored. So we do that and we receive the grace. Amen. We to invite the children forward for a message. Anybody else? 
else coming? Oh, I saw some others. Look at your footsteps. No? Okay. No? All right, well, thanks for coming up. I've got, uh, I've got something here. What is this? You know, it's a battery. Where's the battery? Oh, here they come. Okay. Welcome. Have a seat. Very good. Okay. What do I have here? What is it? Battery. What, what do I use this for? Where am I going to put this? You want to touch it? Get it? It's a big one. What do we use a battery for? That's right, charging. It says ever ready on it. Good reading, yes. Well, a battery somehow, and smarter people can tell you, somehow something goes on in here. There's some chemicals in here that make this powerful. And they charge our devices and other things, and lights, and all sorts of things like that. So this has a little bit of power in it. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> She'll give it back to you in a minute. So anyway, this has power in it, and it makes stuff work. Now, do you have a battery inside of you? Does anybody have a battery inside of you? No? Well, how, how do you wake up in the morning? How do you get going? What is it? My dad is here. That's good. That's good. Your brother jumps on you. Oh, no. How do you wake up?
That was fun today, huh? Okay, well, can I say any prayers for anybody? Yes, David. singing, I am trusting me, Lord Jesus.
living in Christ. So we turn to that um, today. Let's uh, ask God for some help in hearing this, hearing these words. Let's pray. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit uh, pouring out a filling of this place and, and of our hearts so that we may be inspired and challenged and convicted and um, made new. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The scripture this morning comes from Philippians chapter 4. Verses 10 through 13. Verse 13 in particular, I hope you have somewhere uh, highlighted on your refrigerator, in your, on your mirror, in your device. You've heard it before. We're going to take a really close look at it this morning. It's going to make a, it's going to make a difference. Let's listen for God's word. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. So many of us, so many of us have grown up with reading a little book called The Little Engine That Good. The Little Engine That Good written about 1830 or so, so almost everybody here would have come across it, either as a child or as a parent at some point. The little engine that could, you remember, it's a little engine compared to the other ones, and it's given a huge payload, and just like life, it comes to this big hill, right? And it tries a couple of times, and it has a tough time getting up the hill, and then it says... I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, and it keeps going, it keeps going, it gets up there, and does it. And then afterwards, also, the train says, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. And it's a beautiful, inspirational message for children, that's great, it's a good thing to start life out with, but, as either young adults or as adults, unfortunately, unfortunately, we learn that sometimes we say, I think I can, I think I can, and we can't. And sometimes those hills in front of us, well, they're too great. And sometimes we're left thinking, I thought I could, not because, not out of affirmation after we had completed the task, but with regret, I thought I could, I thought I could. And that's life. And that's where a lot of us, that's where a lot of us dwell. I thought I could. And that's a hard thing to look back at the hills that we, we couldn't climb. It's wonderful, like I said, as children, to believe that, that all things are possible. And sometimes they do happen. There's some, there's some beauty in that. But unfortunately, a lot of times, it doesn't happen. And whether it's life circumstances, whether it's disease, whether it's just old age, we lose power, or at least we, we seem to, or we think we do. And then we hear these words of Paul, these so powerful words, and they remind us that part of this is perspective. Yes, are there defeats in life? Absolutely. Are there hills that maybe we have faced or we're facing right now that are too, too much? And as many times as we can say, I think I can, I think I can, probably won't happen. So there has to be something else. There has to be another way. 
Paul reveals this. I want you to take a close look. He, he uses the word secret. We don't mean that in a, in, a, uh, in a weird way. He means insight. I discovered the insight. And one of the things we'll hear about is that so often as humans, very naturally, when we look at a problem, when we look at a challenge, when we look at a hill, we think of two things. We think of confidence, we think of resources. That's the little train saying, I think I can. That's confidence, right? Well, like we said, we've learned that confidence may not be enough sometimes. <coughs> So we say, all right, all right, I may not have the confidence, but maybe I have the resources. Maybe I have the strength or financial resources, whatever it takes. And we realize they're finite as well. So there has to be something else. Let's see what Paul teaches us this morning. <clears throat> Just a few verses, but important nonetheless. He starts talking about this gift, and he's, He's giving thanks, and the Christians at Philippi, and they send him uh, this gift, and that's great, and it supports him. Now remember, Paul's writing from prison. He's in prison. And we know earlier in this letter, he talks about, he's rejoicing, and we think, rejoicing in prison? How does he do that? Earlier in this uh, chapter, he talks about rejoicing in all things. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. How's he doing this? Where's this coming from? What's this quote-unquote secret? Verse 11. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. Can you imagine saying that today in this society? Can you, can you say it with a straight face out there? In the world, I'm good with all that I have. I'm content with everything I have. People would laugh. They'd say, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, but don't you want more? How can you, how can you be content with what you have? It's, it's never enough. But Paul says something. He starts this by saying, I'm content. I'm good with whatever I have. <clears throat> Verse 12, I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, and of having plenty and of being in need. Do you hear that? Those are those two things. He, we just talked about confidence and resources. And Paul said, I've been in some great times where I was feeling great, and I had everything I needed, and the resources were there, no problems. I've been there too. <clears throat> Did it last? No. Maybe you've been there too. Maybe you're there now. Then on the other side, he says, but, but I've also been there when I, I didn't have anything. Some of you would describe it from various age groups as I didn't have two nickels to rub together. But he's saying, I, I was low, and have two nickels to rub together. And he says, that's all right, too. And again, this almost mystery, you're thinking, well, what is it? How? I'd love to know this secret. What is it? And that will reveal. He says, verse 13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength, or who strengthens me. Could it be as simple <clears throat> as that? So he talks about, I was doing well. I was, I was low. But it didn't matter. Because I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Let's look at these, these few words here. Verse 13. I can do all things... I can do, let's start there. He's saying, I have the ability. I have the power. All things, panta, the Greek word, all things. 
God works in all things for good. Romans 8.28, right? All things. And this, when they write all things, they mean it. Good, bad, otherwise. I can do all things. And here's the most important preposition in the Bible, the most important preposition in Reformed Church theology. Through. Through. Are there times for miracles that come from above? Yes. But most, most often, God is going to work through us in other people's lives and through other people in our lives, and he's going to work through circumstances. So often we think, I just, I just wish this would disappear, I wish this would go away, I wish there was a way around. And all the while God's saying, now I'm going to walk you through this. Our call to worship from Isaiah 43 said, you will walk through the fire and you will not be burned. You will go through the, the raging rivers. I will be with you. Through. And so Paul recognizes, and do you know what through means? You know, it means going through something, but... When we say, I can do all things through him, it means submission. It means saying, and it's having the humility, the awareness and the humility to say, I can't. We wouldn't know the book, The Little Engine That Could, if the little engine was saying, I don't think I can, I don't think I can, I don't think I can. Nobody wants to read that. Understandably. But Paul got to hills in his life, and you and I have been facing hills of our lives, and we have said, I can't, I can't. But Paul awakened, and that's why we're trying to do this morning, awakening to something else. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And that strengthens there, that word means power. I can do all things through him who gives me power. Meaning, I acknowledge where my strength comes from. Thus, kind of negating, well, negating the two things we rely on most. Confidence, resources. Paul talks about, I had resources, didn't last. I didn't have resources, that didn't last either. But I learned they don't matter. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being well fed and going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. It has this equalizing effect to say that whatever we're facing, that doesn't matter. Is it real? Is it serious at times? Absolutely. We're not taking away from that. <clears throat> but what we're talking about is recognizing, we know from in Romans, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Think about this. You've heard me say it before. Hear me so clearly this morning. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. He was dead. Now he's alive. That same power dwells within you and I from being followers and believers in Jesus Christ. That's not, that's not a battery's worth of power. This is only going to turn on a light. This is only going to power a toy. But you and I have overcoming death power inside of us. And here's the thing. We know that. You've read it. I've said it. You've thought it. We get all pumped up at Easter. And then we go back to being discouraged. Tired. <coughs> beat down. And broken down. By real stuff. And I'm not saying. Again. And Paul wasn't saying. It's all going to disappear. All the... And sometimes we hear this about Christianity. Sometimes we, if you become a Christian, or if you just have more faith, you deepen your faith, all the problems will go away. Raise your hand if 
All the problems have gone away yet. Please let us know when that happens. It's not going to happen. That's why Paul was so good at these three, four verses here to say, I've been good, I've been down. But it wasn't about those times. It was about what I had inside of me. When you say the word invincible, you may smirk. You may think, yeah, right. Really? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that overcame death, dwelling inside of you, so that we can say with confidence, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so we look at our circumstances in a different way now. And we say, yes, I may have been diagnosed. There are people in this room who have done this, who have lived it. Yes, I may have been diagnosed with cancer. But I can go through the chemotherapy because I have the strength <coughs> who lives inside me. I can deal with loss in my life, loss of loved ones in my life. It hurts. I still cry years later, but I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Maybe I've lost a job or maybe some kind of transition and I grieve how that gave me such purpose. And I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Taking care of aging parents. All of this is in this room. And you know it needs strength. And when we rely on ourselves, basically, when we say, well, do I have the confidence to do it? Or do I have the resources, internally or externally? No. <laughs> I think we can't. But I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That's invincibility. Until your very last breath, Living in Christ, we are invincible. I know it doesn't feel it, but we've got to separate the it feels it and the reality. That's what happens a lot of times. We let the feelings kind of control. We say, well, I just don't feel it. I just don't have it today. Sure, there'll be times like that, absolutely. But this morning, this word from Paul, this morning, telling us we are invincible. We're going to hear in the next few weeks how we are. For the purpose of this series, by the end, if not today, <clears throat> next week, or the next week, is for us to walk around living invincible. No more do we have to walk around like this. Well, I believe in God, but maybe someday it'll get better. Is that, is that what God intended? No. I'm not saying you're going to be sprinting every day, especially with you if you have a bad knee. But we can live a different way. And not only benefits ourselves, I mean, that's part of it, and that's okay, but it gives glory to God. We're not giving glory to God when we're, when we're like this, all beat up. No glory to God, no witness or encouragement to others. But also, it's not the way to live. I look around this room. There are challenges. Every single person, I know your stories. There are challenges here. And what Paul is saying today is the challenges don't define us. The only thing that should define us is the thing that strengthens us. And that's Him, capital H, living in Christ. We are invincible. There's no disease. There's no circumstance. There's no defeat. There's no loss that can take away from what's inside of us. It's real. It takes a cost. It takes a toll. But as of this morning, hearing this again, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We're new. We have new strength. And we look at our challenge, and we look at the challenges, and I look at our circumstances, and we say, no, I can do this. And not because of me, and not because of us, but because of him.
pray for the strength this morning to change that perspective, to live boldly and invincibly, relying on Him, trusting in Him, living in Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we do turn to you. We, we're tired. Everyone is tired. Many of us overwhelmed. But we thank you for this word this morning because it, it cuts through all of that. We want to ask for your forgiveness. We've been, uh, we've been living <laughs> defeated. And we're sorry. That denies you glory. That makes life miserable. And we're failing as witnesses. So Lord, we're asking you to awaken us, remind us, help us to discover this great, great power. Really an inconceivable power that took Jesus from death, from the depths of hell, and raised him to life, resurrection life. And he's seated next to you. <coughs> We want that power. We yearn for it. Clear away our feelings of, of doubt and, and, and inadequacy. And help us to, to live <laughs> saying not only that we think we can, we believe we can because of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Like I said, for the next few weeks, we're going to be hearing these messages, these words, sometimes stories, passages, the invincible, of overcoming. I pray that you receive them well. Take time to thank God for all the goodness in our lives. We respond with service, we respond with worshiping, and respond, yes, with our finances, too. Let's do that together now. Please pray with me. Lord, we do turn to you. We ask for uh, your blessings to continue in our lives so that we can respond and lift these offerings up to you. We do it in trust, in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. vision is to be a house of prayer, a place of people. And when you come to ask us for prayer, we pray for you faithfully and, and do and joyfully as well. So we want to continue to do that. Lift up joys and concerns, share, part of sharing our lives together. Five years ago yesterday, you called me to be your pastor. And so I thank you for that. And I thank you for turn to you, as Paul said, in challenging times and uh, times of, of blessings and bounty. And either way, we turn to you because we recognize we need you. And we need you in a number of circumstances. Um, we pray for Nick. And we pray that you, he is in a, a darkness. We pray that your light will reach him. comfort him and reach him. Lord, we lift up uh, Vincent and on behalf of Angela, we pray for his difficult road. We pray uh, for strength. Lord, we also lift up Jack. We pray that uh, his surgery will go well and that his recovery will go well also. Lord, we want to give thanks for a number of things. We're giving thanks for uh, Helen's progress, M's progress. We need to pray for Ace need your help still, but we celebrate that you're moving there visibly. Lord, we pray for Mr. Frank and his travels coming up. Um, we also uh, offer comfort to uh, Barbara, who uh, lost uh, Lloyd four years ago today. We pray for comfort for the Heichels. Um, three people in need.
need in this room. They may not have said it, Lord, but um, they need you. And so we turn to you. We ask for your help. We ask for your strength. And we are thankful for all the goodness you provide. We also lift up uh, Barbara as well. And uh, thank you for keeping her safe. Lord, in all these things, we turn to Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let's sing.